good day to all of you out there that have been uh, watching my introductory video. Greatly appreciate the fact that you watched it. We're trying to get number two out, and the number two is going to be titled The Steaming Wood Adventure. Uh, I went through some serious learning during this process of trying to figure out how to steam all this wood, and what radiuses I could bend to, and how the wood would behave, and so forth. So we started out making all those 1 8 inch by 7 8 inch wide strips of both mahogany and white ash. The white ash definitely was a newer wood and the mahogany pieces could have been anywhere from 50 to 70 years old, some of it. We chose to steam two pieces of wood at a time, a piece of mahogany and a piece of white ash, and then we tried it using a piece of PVC pipe that was approximately one inch in diameter on the ID. As we learned the heat from the steaming process softened the PVC pipe up and it started bending. So we had to create some two by four supports for the pipe to keep it fairly straight. But in the meantime, the steamer that I started using was, was a store-bought wallpaper steamer and it didn't survive very long. Not sure if it was the water or what, but the electrode internally kind of calcified and quit working. So at that point in time, I had happened to take a trip up to Cedarville, Michigan, where there's a boat building school. And they had a beautiful steamer made out of galvanized pipe. Having seen that and took a couple pictures of it, I decided to build my own steamer. This steamer worked for the entire duration of the project. I did have to uh, replace the heating element in it one time and what I used was a heating element of a hot water heater. That worked really good. For the whole process we made three different steam boxes. The first one that we did most of the small strips of wood with was the one inch PVC pipe. Making these steam boxes, you can see in a lot of the pictures, what I did was I took an eight foot long piece of PVC pipe, cut it in half, put a T in the middle, and then adapted it so that the hose coming out of the steamer would go right directly into that T. And then on each end of the tubing, I placed a piece of old denim cloth with some duct tape and allowed the excess steam that came out the ends just to condense on the rag and drip onto a bucket. That really worked good and it was kind of fun because the lignum in the wood kind of gave off a nice odor and uh, turned the water brown. It all worked out pretty good. I was quite happy with the end results. We also had to make a two inch PVC pipe steam box. The two inch steam box was made to do the frame of the bolt that has the step in it. The bolt has approximately an inch and three quarter to two inch step and I had to go with double width. So the one inch wide or seven eighths inch wide pieces of wood had to be increased to two inches wide. Let's say one and three quarters to fit inside of the two inch PVC pipe. The four inch tube was the third steam box that we created. That was used to do the keel. The curvature of the keel near the bow required that large of a steam box in order to fit the pieces of mahogany and white ash into. Steamed them, bent that around a form and clamped it. That was really the only time that steam box was used. Uh, the steaming duration that we used for the wood was about an hour and a half in the steam. That seemed to be what it took to get it to uh, flex really nicely. The white ash, as steamed, would very easily bend into place and force the mahogany into the same shape. I was rather surprised to learn that I could bend this wood to a three inch radius. And that was a pretty tight radius considering. We did two pieces of wood at a time. Once the pieces of wood were bent, they were allowed to sit in the form. They had to be allowed to sit for three days to become dry enough for the epoxy to work properly. Once they were good and dry, we took and applied the West epoxy to the pieces, put them back in the form, clamped them up, and let that cure for overnight. I only had one time when I didn't wait long enough and it definitely separated on me and I had to go back and re-glue. 
And as you can see in some of the illustrations, there's a, I've created this easel, which I relofted the shape of the frame on, and then placed blocks on the exterior edge of the frame that the wood was then steamed and pressed into and clamped. And those above the easel are two pieces that are drying at this time, hanging, allowing the, the actually a furnace duct is right above that and blowing warmer air down onto those pieces of wood. It took a period of two winters to make the 24 frames that are in this boat. Okay, well that's the end of this video. What I'm curious to know is if I should continue on a sequence, sequence of as building the boat, or if I should jump ahead and make a video about what we're doing currently on the boat. And that's the end.